Most courses will not include what the actual kids think about it. It's just the parents talking. Instead of it being work, it has to be just your thing and separate and you only have two hours a week to do it and it's carved out. It's like, no, this is something that we can do together. And I've never told that story, you know, anywhere. So this is unique content for me too. I think you, you, you've just helped me with my why. Welcome aboard. Well, hey, thanks for doing this. This is great. Yeah. So, so Barry's a member of my Movement Makers program. Oh, he's got the book too, which is fantastic. Yep. And part of that is we do an IG Live together. So what do you got? How can I help, man? Oh, a handful of things, Evan. Um, first is full-time job, family, a lot going on, building dad's growing daughters on the side. Yeah. And wondering how do you, like, I, I love how you do the top 10. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious as to how do you get those 10 more quickly because I'm thinking like I do all this research and then it takes a long time and I got to speed that up. Any suggestions on how to speed up the research for your posts? So what are you trying to do? You're trying to pull quotes of, of people talking about being a father raising daughters? Well, it's it's for one, it's for book reviews. And for the one right now, it's uh, I'm creating my first freemium. And the questions I get most from dads are, what do I do with screen time and social media? And so my, it's got to become my old approach, but there's, what, 12 books I'm going through right now. And it's just, everybody has these different ideas. I have my ideas and it's like such a big topic. I'm trying to get my arms wrapped around it and get something out because with just very little time, you know, maybe an hour from five to six in the morning and then, and then you know, I try for four hours Saturday and Sunday, and that's all the time I have. And so for huge topics like this, suggestions for aggregating that content. Why is it not you? Why is it not your opinions on how to handle screen time? Well, um, well <laughs> it is, but then I always like to provide other sources that back me up. And maybe that's just my own, I don't know, science background and security. What do you think? I should just like put my 10 out there and not worry about. Well, and it doesn't even have to be 10. It's like, Hey, here's how to handle screen time. If that's the most common question that you're getting, that's a great freemium uh, model. That's a great lead magnet thing for you. Like, what do you want to sell ultimately coaching? What, what's um, the business model? Uh, the, the business model long-term is let me take a cough drop out. Yeah. <laughs> is the business model long-term is a subscription site with um, courses. Of you teaching? Right. Great, so think of your YouTube channel, Instagram channel, your social media content as the easier to understand version of it. Okay. So if you wanna sell a course, I want you to be the guy that I'm gonna learn from. You could have a great quote from Will Smith, but is Will, if Will Smith's not teaching a course, it's gonna be right. harder to, to sell it. Um, so it's building you up. The other thing that's kind of coming to mind is I'd love to, how old are your daughters? They, they are 11 and 13. I love to involve them. I've just started doing that and I've, I've been reluctant, but hearing that it makes me think I, w I will do it. I mean, the only, the only thing I would just be being conscious of what stories you share or, um, you know, privacy, that kind of stuff. But as long as they're into it, I did a great podcast with a guy who, had his two daughters join me uh -huh. uh, and that's his show. It's like him and his two daughters and they were younger. It's like, I want to say eight and 12. I'm okay. kind of trying to remember, but younger than yours. And I think that could actually be a really cool extra add on where it's you sharing your views on how to do things. Plus okay. you do uh, interviews with people like kind of like this, but yeah. where you're on top. But bring the bring your daughters in. Like, who do they want to learn from? Who do they want to oh, ask questions idea. from? And then you're going to ask your questions, and then you get the daughters' take. So if you're going to bring on, if you like the science approach, then you go get whatever researcher is talking about screen time, for example. Let's just play with that one, okay. right? So University of Texas comes out with this new study on screen time. Right. Uh, you go, you ask the professor, hey, do you want to come on my show? I'd love to talk to you about what this means. And, and if you're not going after somebody huge, it's usually a lot easier, right? Like if you want Oprah to come on your show to talk about, <laughs> that's going to be super difficult, but some professor, 
Um, I've reached out and gotten a lot of contact with professors who have no idea who I am, right? Okay. Like researching into Acromancia, which is a you know gut bacteria bug, and just messaging because I, I I care about it. Um, and they've like no idea who I am, but they're willing to respond because most people don't. A lot of scientists are really bad at marketing and, and exposure and getting the message out there. Right. And so you being able to kind of translate the science speak into digestible, consumable nuggets of wisdom oh, cool. could be cool. But your questions are going to come from a certain angle. But then it'd be cool to have your 13-year-old there saying, well, what about this? <laughs> my 13-year-old is like, I want my phone by my bed. I night, want my right? screen time, right? <laughs> yeah, but, right? And how do you handle that dynamic, right? Like how oh, do you yeah. make it so that she understands uh, – what is doing to her and whatever the, you know, whatever the limits are and then whatever rules you set up that you're both in agreement instead of you just saying, no, do it my way. Cause I said so, cause I'm the adult here. And until you're 16 and move out. You, right. Yeah. Um, I think that could be really a fun thing to do. Super educational, but also, and then it's not just you working by yourself on it. It's mm -hmm. a project to, to bond with your daughters well, and I like that too, because it makes it more fun and not me going, what is all the information? And then also I've been reluctant to look, reach out to anyone because I'm like, oh, I've just started. I don't have any followers. You know, it's just, I'm seven or something. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, uh, so I've been reluctant, but I like the idea of reaching out to some researchers who you know, may not be used to getting reached out to. Yeah. And, and a lot of times it's not even, you can look at who does a study. And mm -hmm. there's the there's the high up person who kind of co-signed it, but then there's also the people who did the work. Oh, there you go. The, the like that. on any study, it'll show everybody who yeah. was involved in it, right? Yeah, and everybody on, who's listed on the abstract. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All of those people, and and their emails are all available on their on the university website. Oh, for the most part, and then yeah, some some somebody who actually maybe conducted some of the tests or some of the interviews or some of the whatever, the actual work that the high up person is like, they're not doing it themselves. Um, but that person has got a hands on in the data doing it. They may have never ever been reached out to by anybody. Oh, you're right. And they're probably the most passionate about it. Yeah, like they were the ones doing the work. Oh, and this is great. And, and, so, and also it helps me break through the reaching out to others and starting to do an interview and, and uh, getting that going. Yeah, and, and all you have to do is basically translate the science into everyday speak. Um, this is what Tim Ferriss does. Like, I love Tim, and that's his yeah, entire weird. business model, is he takes scientific research that the average Joe ha can't read. Like, most people never read an abstract of anything, right? Oh, <laughs> yeah, but, you're, but this is the skill, right? Most people right. get their information from Twitter <laughs> or Instagram or... USA Today or something, right? It's like people who who can translate what that scientific paper means. Oh, and so great that idea. could be you, right? Part of the problem why a lot of researchers, scientists, academics, I think even in the entrepreneurial world, they don't do super well is because they can't communicate their message to the masses. They right. can only talk to each other. Um, and so that creates a huge opportunity for you that even if you just start with the, I think you could actually get some professors, like just legit professors, because they care about getting their, they care about the research. They just spent two years doing this study. It means something to them. Nobody cares enough about it. Right, right. And here's this guy who's got this mission to help fathers raise better daughters. Yeah, I'll, I'll spend 20 minutes talking to him, right? So oh. I, I don't think you only have to go down. I think I think like Will Smith and Oprah and those guys, yes, that'll be years. <laughs> That'll be, yeah, it's a little out of reach. How's that yeah. out of reach for me? I'm still working on those people. <laughs> but researchers, super easy. And if you love the kind of data angle to it, so you're going to bring the, the recommendations plus science backing behind it. I, I think, think it, about that, about that being an angle of mine, because I, I love Tim Ferriss. I love Tom Bilyeu. I love you. I love, you know, it's just all these, like, okay, why do I love the people I follow? It's yeah. Because there's good, solid data behind it, you know? Yeah. I, Tim is the most. Tim Tim dives into the data and the details the most. Um, Tom does some. Tom is educated enough. I I pull from different sources, but I'm not as uh, looking into research reports on things. But I think 
that's a super interesting angle. Um, yeah, and there's lots of research out there that just oh, goes there just goes unnoticed. Oh, awesome. um, so that could even be a project <laughs> with your daughters. It's like, hey, let's pick let's pick an assignment together. Let's pick one study that you you have an opinion on or that you're interested in, and then you sit. Instead of, I guess you're not doing bedtime stories at 13 anymore, but, you know, I was like, instead of bedtime I, stories. I still, in my 11-year-old, I, I make up stories a lot of nights, and so I'm, I can still get her on the story side. Okay. Well, but, like, I'm thinking that could be a father-daughter. Instead of it being work, that has to be just your thing and separate, and you only have two hours a week to do it, and it's carved out. It's like, no, this is something that we can do together, and let's find something that you care about that you're interested in too, not just, not just daddy's not just dad. thing, what he cares about, but let, let's pick one that you care about too. Oh, and then we'll both, great. we'll both share our views on it. Um, it's a oh, huge, is- if you can get them on camera doing it, like if they care, I mean, obviously I'm not going to force them. Oh, but- I can, I can, I actually did with my first course. Yeah. Um, I, I, it's called, have you brushed your teeth yet? It's about habits and chores. Yeah. And I got them, uh, it's on Kajabi and um, I got them to do like, it's a bonus about, what my daughters think. Yeah. And they had a blast doing it. Yeah. I, and it's so help, like most courses will not include what the actual kids think about it. It's just the parents talking. Right. And in terms of growing yeah. their confidence. So I did a podcast maybe three weeks ago with, yeah. um, there's a woman in London who's a leadership expert and she wanted okay. me to come on and talk about leadership. Uh, and she's, you know, in her fifties, and then she also brought her son on who was just in university. Okay. And at the beginning, uh, so they were both interviewing us and, and the woman has, you know, decades of experience doing this. And the son is basically just getting started. And one of the things we talked about was I was, I was so happy that he was on because at the beginning he feels like, what does he know about leadership? You know, like he wants to learn, but Here's his mom, right. who's the expert, who has all this experience, who's going to ask way better questions than him. And she uh, basically makes sure to make him feel comfortable and integrate him into the show to say, hey, what's, what question do you have for Evan? Oh, yeah. You know, as an 18-year-old, 19-year-old, 20-year-old, however old he was. Um, I'm going to do it. Yeah, and just a confidence to feel like now he's enough, like he, that he can – he doesn't have to have all the experience that his mom has, but that um, – it's the flip of you, basically, right? It's the son and the, and the mother instead of the father and the daughters. But uh, oh, that's awesome. Well, and you just hit on this. This second most asked question is, which I was going to do, is the the free memory, the lead magnet is confidence. Yeah. How do I help my daughter be more confident? And so those, um, I love the idea that oh, by involving them more, that helps build their confidence. Yeah, if there's somebody that they look up to, like having them come on with me, they're like, oh, I don't know who this guy is. Forget that. But if you, if you, (laughs) but that's the thing. Like if it's somebody that they care about, that Mm -hmm. they've researched, they've read about, or they have some opinion of, and it doesn't necessarily have to be some pop star, you know, Taylor Swift or somebody. It could be somebody that they just, they just care about or somebody they've been researching for the past two weeks. And now they're actually going to talk to this person. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's like, oh my God, we're going to talk to this person. And, and like, them just showing up and asking a question is a huge, oh, like that huge. they're, that they're deserving, that they're worthy, that they're not going to ask a stupid question and, and that the person is actually responding yeah. just creates so much confidence and, and hope and um, just feeling like you can do stuff. Oh, it is. And that's like, okay, me right now, I'm like going, okay, how many questions can I get for Evan? You have time for a couple more? Yeah. 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 Oh, awesome. Um, So uh, the next one's part of the first one. Okay, it is a side hustle, minimal amount of time. Yeah. Um, uh, realist, I'm not good at setting realistic expectations. And so that's moved me into the frustration, overwhelm cycle. And so any um, suggestions, recommendations there for with the minimal amount of time, realistic expectations and, and how to use that um, time the most effectively. So I would... F- Flip the expectations of the results because that's what it is. It's like, hey, how long until I get X, Y, Z accomplished? And right. flip it to actually enjoying the process of doing the work. Oh, nice. Because if you think about think about your message to your daughters as well as your message to fathers who are raising daughters, right? Which is what your whole thing is about. Your message isn't, okay, get them ready so that when they graduate university, they can go get a good job. 
Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> but that's very outcome focused, right? It's no, enjoy your life with your daughters, like make today count, teach them the things that, oh, yeah. right. So you just apply the same mindset to your business and that if you're going to go interview a university of Kansas city researcher that it's not just about getting this episode out and trying to get a thousand views on it. It's I'm going to enjoy this time with my daughters, researching the person, yeah. asking the questions, doing the live together, breaking them out of their comfort zone and, and then posting a great interview. So tying your self-worth to that process more than how many people saw this episode. I think you, you, you just helped me with my why because I've been struggling with the little amount of time and I've been going, uh, there, there's a little irony here that I'm wanting to spend time on this and that's taking away time from my daughters. Mm -hmm. And so now it's putting those two together. And so uh, that's, thank you. That's, that's, you've not only helped me with that, but helped me with more solidify my why. Yeah. I mean, you, you already had your why and you already had your message. I'm just helping kind of bring it inside the business context. Um, of running your business. So one of the things I love the most is my, so my parents are on the wall behind me, right? Like that's my oh, mom. Oh, I love it. And my mom was a, so that's me when I'm eight or nine years old. Yeah. And my mom basically gave me opportunities and made me do, not made me, like we worked on a whole bunch of things always together. I remember when I was, your daughter's 11 and 13. Yeah. So when I was 13, the Blue Jays had just won the World Series. Um, Toronto, Toronto fan, Toronto Blue yeah, Jays baseball. Yeah. And, and my mom um, took me, I've got two sisters, but she took me by herself, just the two of us as like uh, mother, son time together, right? Yeah. To Dunedin, which is where they do spring training yeah, Florida, before the yeah. season starts, Florida. And uh, I wanted to go meet the players, you know? And I was super nervous because... Roberto Alomar and Joe Carter and, you know, these main names may not mean anything to you, but like they were my heroes at the time. Right. Oh, wow. Yeah. And there's this little moment between when the car, when they, they pull up in the parking lot and you can be there, like you can be there as they open their car and they have to walk to the facility. And in that stretch, people would be trying to take pictures and, and, and give them cards to sign and balls to sign. And at the beginning, I was super nervous. She didn't really know who they were. I mean, she was there, right. you know. She just me. trying to get you in front of them. Yeah. So she's like, yeah. go, go, go. Like, this is your chance. You're, you're never going to, back home in Toronto, you're never going to, the stadium's ginormous, the security everywhere. You're never going to meet these guys. So this is your chance to go and, and meet them. And so, like, yeah. my heart's beating like crazy, and I'm <laughs> scared out of my mind. And, oh, like, what's the worst that's going to happen, you know? They're not going to, like, throw you out of the air as a, you know, as a 13-year-old kid. And, um, and I did it and, and I got, uh, a couple hundred autographs in the span of really? like a week and a half. Cause I knew every player, even the minor leaguers that like nobody knew who they were. And the adults were then saying, who's that guy coming up? Who's the, Oh, that's Vince Horseman. He only threw one <laughs> inning last year, but I got his card right here. Like, right. Um, well, look at that. I mean, now today that's a vivid memory. Yeah. 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 As a 13 year old. Right. So yeah. that's the thing. Like my mom took me there. And, and help me out of my comfort zone to do something I would never have done on my own or anywhere close to it. And I've never told that story, you know, anywhere. So this is unique content for me too. Um, so I think that'd be awesome, right? I think like that's a great gift that you can give your daughters on top of it being fun. And I honestly, I think even more valuable because if you're talking about how to do chores <laughs> and, then, and then you have your daughter <laughs> say, yeah, you know what? I don't like doing chores, but I like when you structure it like this, it is yeah. actually okay. It's not that bad, right? To see the daughters on there. Um, well, I, I love your idea of bringing them in more and, and getting their perspective because that'll, that will make it more valuable for everybody, right? And, yeah. And, and, um, just, and, I, and just I, holding the space for them, right? Because I'm sure yeah. you've got 18,000 questions you want to ask <laughs> whoever you're going to bring on, but yeah. to say, hey, okay, what, what do you want to ask? And then just see what she comes up with. And it may not be the greatest question of all time, but the fact that she's asking the question to somebody who's got authority and that they're, you know, in this conversation equal is a huge confidence booster. And, and you'll probably get some, definitely get some unique answers from the person because they'll be, a, I'm a different person when I'm talking to you versus right. an 11 year old girl. Oh right? yeah. 
And so you just get a different side of people as well, which would be super cool. Oh, I love it. And do you recommend, um, because this is new to me, this is the first time I've ever done Instagram It's happening. You made it. It's amazing. (laughs) And and so uh, like starting off, is this something that I do and then edit or do live? Any thoughts or recommendations there? Instagram live is the easiest way to do it. Most people have an Instagram account, say, join me live. Um, You might get a little bit of a live audience joining in. Uh, And then you cut it and turn it to a YouTube video. Um, There we go. Three weeks ago, we had a session in uh, Inside Movement Makers mm-hmm. where we showed you how to turn an IG Live into a YouTube video. I'll go rewatch that. Yeah, if you weren't on there, rewatch it. I also asked uh, Joshua, who, who led that session, he's going to make a one-minute version of it. Okay. Of like how to turn an IG Live into a YouTube video. Basically, we're on top of each other right now. Right. All you have to do is YouTube is horizontal. So you're just putting us next to each other. And that's the edit. And it's a super easy yeah. edit. Maybe your daughters even want to help and get involved in the editing process of and, and learning how to, like, everybody wants to be a YouTuber. It's the number one career that's, choice. Yeah, my, for, youngest, my youngest is a YouTuber, wants to be the YouTube. My old older daughter um, is huge artist on Instagram. And she's like, oh, I'll teach you how to do Instagram. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's it. Like, your yeah. 11-year-old could do it. She could cut these videos and put them next to, to each other. And then your 13-year-old yeah. could design the thumbnail that goes on the cover of the video that goes up to YouTube. And so it's this oh, joint thing that we're all putting together. Oh, I love it. I love it. You, ah, oh, that's breaking through multiple barriers here. Um, the next one, uh, which, you know, no matter how many times I read it, I still struggle, but this is getting over it, I think, is the whole vulnerability. And I like your chapter on sharing is scary. Mm-hmm. Like this scares me, right? I've yeah. never done this before. And it's like, okay, come on. This is the world we live in now. Um, and then, but with, with the vulnerability, with some of it being like things I don't know that I want my daughters to know yet, <laughs> right? So I'm like w- withholding that. That's just, just the whole idea, the vulnerability side of it and telling uh, my story. It is scary and I'm reluctant to do it. And so I, this is, I mean, but you have the answers and it's like, you just got to do it because that's how you end up connecting with, you know, you say it all, you end up connecting with other people that that's their story. And, but just getting it down, I'm, I've been reluctant to do. Yeah. And you know, it's, I've got an 11 year old. So kind of right in between, um, no, you, you're 11 and 13, yeah. right? Yeah. 11 and 13. Um, it always surprises me of how much he actually thinks like an adult. You know, it's like they're a lot more, you just still think of them as a five-year-old, but it's like, oh, they're not five or eight anymore. Like they're actually processing things. Um, I think it'd be super interesting to see, I don't know that they've, your daughters have seen you be unsure of things or not quite often. Yeah. Maybe a few times in their lives. Like it's a cool, it's a cool opportunity to actually have them see a, a, a side of you that they haven't seen before and actually lead to greater understanding that, oh, you actually worry yeah. about these things or you're actually thinking about these things, um, which could help the relationship, not even just with the audience, but the relationship with your daughters be better. Yeah, Because I'm sure your message in your teachings is not hide everything, be perfect. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> right? So... <laughs> like I so, just published my uh, uh, YouTube today on a few weeks ago. Um, it, it was went on a boat trip long story short it was it was a self-awareness video and about what i called unrealized assumptions about how i realized after the trip oh i could have handled some things much better mm-hmm. <laughs> with my my daughter who was who was scared and so i mean they see that so they see little pit points of it but it's like okay i just need to open that up more yeah i think the important part is you're not you're not throwing somebody under the bus oh, it's no. you yeah it's it's because sometimes in sharing your story, it involves somebody else, like somebody caused you pain and you don't necessarily want to throw your mom under the bus. Right. Right. So it's the same thing. Like you don't want to throw your daughters under the bus or make them look bad or say something that that might embarrass them. It's about you. So the specifics almost don't matter. Like, OK, so, for example, whatever happened with your daughter that she she got angry and, and you got angry and then you're not happy with how she handled the fishing trip or whatever. What she did doesn't really matter. Oh, it was what I did. Yeah. No, but like what you, she did yeah. something to cause what you did. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah, so, and we, we were out and the water was rough and and she started crying and she screamed. And I'm like, I'm trying to control the boat and do all this kind of stuff. And yeah. I've been on the water forever. And then the realization, my wife is like, you got to remember, she's never been out on a boat like this. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, yeah. You know, so, she's it's a but, roller coaster and she thinks she's going to flip over. <laughs> there's a lot of that action, reaction, action, reaction, right? Yeah. And we just kind of escalate it. Um, so... You know, maybe she's crying and she says, I hate you, daddy, for bringing me on this boat or something. Right. You can leave that part of the story out. Right. Like it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Something that might make her look bad or she watched it. She may not be comfortable with you sharing that. It doesn't matter that she said that. It matters that she was crying and that you you yelled or you raised your voice or you were frustrated or you like it's you're just owning your part of the story and sharing that. That's the vulnerability more than. Yeah what she's what she said or how it exactly got sparked the fact is you're on this rough boat she's crying you don't have to tell too much about what then she like she cried and then she peed herself or something right like you don't have to share that <laughs> i'm just making stuff up but right. that if she heard I'm that like, like yeah. oh my god i can't believe you shared that daddy come on right yeah yeah that's i i love it it's like so it's just drawing the boundaries there and maybe up to them and then stopping that helps a lot that helps me start framing things all that matters is that you got triggered and you then reacted in a way that later on you're not proud of right. and here's how you want to handle it better the next time and then here's what you did afterwards you you went you apologized or you whatever else you did afterwards you're just owning your side of the story because her side almost doesn't matter from from the story from this perspective right now, if yeah. she's comfortable with you saying more, she wants to tell her version. That could be a cool, like, oh, here's what I was thinking when I was on the boat. You know, that could be a cool back and forth. Oh, um, that could be. Oh, you're giving me so many ideas. Um, <laughs> but I awesome. mean, I, I know we got to go, but but it's more the integration, right? So the theme here is not just seeing it as this is my time. I only have two hours a week and is by myself. It's integrating it so that maybe you spend even more time. But instead of watching that show at night, together or in terms of set of whatever else you might do together yeah. that may not be as meaningful. Like, Hey, let's work on something together to get closer together as well as help other fathers with their daughters build great relationships too. Oh, Evan, thank you so much. This is cool, been fantastic. First IG live. I'm glad you showed yes. up. <laughs> yes. It is great that you do this for your community. I love it. Well, good luck. We're cheering you on and I'll, I'll see Thanks. you inside movement makers. All right. Awesome. Much love, man. Much love. Thanks. If you want to see the one-on-one -on -one I did with Tony Robbins, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. Tony, welcome aboard, man. Thanks, Evan. Great to be with you.